Welcome, fellow travelers. My name is Burgund, and I'm joining Chibi and Vertek at the Golden Feather. Come on in, grab a seat, and let's share tales of adventure. Hello, 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 and welcome to the Golden Feather Tavern, where your hosts, Chibi and Vertek, discuss Ashes of Creation and important topics spoken about within the Ashes community. Every week, we invite you, the viewer, and a special guest to pull up a chair, grab a pint, and join the conversation with us. Today is the 31st of May, 2024, and we are in episode 209. Toss <laughs> a coin to your mayor. And uh, our traveling bar joining us today is Burgund of One Iron Coin. How are you today, sir? I am glorious, as our good friend Stephen likes to say. Um, I'm having a great month, and it's ripe time to start talking some ashes of creation with you all. Oh, no. I'm excited to be hey. here. I messed it up. Hold on. Indeed, I'm indeed. Right Uh-oh. <laughs> forgot the important part there. Forgot the important part. Forgot, and now that uh, the important part. And now that Chibi is 100% cooler, how are you today, Chibi? <laughs> Doing pretty well, doing pretty well. Uh, definitely um, hiding some super secret PI stuff on my screen, uh, mainly the super secret stuff that got released from being super secret, at least verbally. Um, <laughs> what? Stuff was released yeah. verbally today? Yep. Oh my Maggie gosh. Maggie allowed us, uh, all three of us, we are PI testers, um, allowed <laughs> us to verbally be able to speak. And there are three uh, really cool screenshots that were shared out for us um and yeah so i think today's pretty good all things considered we we got to have a great dev stream we get to talk about a great dev stream for once uh from a testing perspective and we have a really cool new uh guild gm who will actually be a part of uh, something i'm going to be announcing um after we get to know our our friend here our our traveling bard but yeah, that's pretty much what's on the docket. We're going to um, chat with Brigand for a little bit. Then we're going to have a little bit of an announcement segment. And then we're going to get into our, our thoughts. And thank you, Exile. Cheers. Good evening. As a wandering tail sword, always good to find a homely hearth on a long journey. A cup of your finest, if you please. Absolutely. Coming right up. Oh, my gosh. Exiled In Ranger. Fact, Fantastic. I hope you thank like you so cherry because Vertex Special is a really good cherry mead. Mm-hmm. My favorite. My favorite. And cheers to the gifted subs as well. Uh, all right. Now that that bit's done. <laughs> I didn't want to do it the whole stream. You had to mimic the, the guy. It was such At a good At least a little bit. He, it, was, it was magical. Like, he looked so cool. But I, honestly, Stephen, I hope your eye feels better. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, my lordy. That being said, Brigand, how are you? Wow, I am so good. I've had such a great month. Um, a lot of things are going well in uh, my my life personally, but uh, we just had a great month of testing, and I am so excited to be able to join you all in the tavern and get a chance to talk about it. It feels uh, like a I'm a little starstruck because you know all three PI testers. We're gonna get into some things that I'm really excited to chat about, and the Iron Coin is going really well, and uh, development has been going uh, strong since the beginning of the year, and it yeah. it's really exciting to present it and and showcase it for everyone uh, in today's episode. So thanks again for having me. Of course, and welcome into all of these wonderful new adventurers who we are meeting for the first time. Um, and for those of you that don't know, we have a new bard every week. And uh, speaking of a new thing, you recently made coin. What is coin all about? Yeah, so coin is, uh, for those that don't know, we are an all cleric guild. And mm. despite, oh, that not, despite not knowing much, that's okay. And despite not knowing much about um, the, the pantheon within Ashes of Creation, we are devoted to faith and uh and norlin is the patron god of faith in or of fate in ashes of creation and so we are not only all clerics we are devoted to faith in fate 
and we have this really awesome uh, mechanic that we like are are building up um, regarding iron coins. And so, yeah, there's there's a lot to talk about. And if you're ready, I'd I'd be happy to dig into it. Yeah. Uh, before we do that, though, Tilly is wondering: as a cleric, as an all cleric guild, are paladins welcome? Paladins are respected for their um, for their faith, but they are not as devoted to their beliefs as uh, an apostle. And an apostle is much more regarded in the Iron Coin. And um, but that is not to say that paladins aren't uh, that are that paladins are looked down upon. We are. We are respectful of of their dedication. It's just uh, let's let's call it uh, fifty percent devoted compared to what I believe an apostle is. <laughs> Lloyd says that's objective, wouldn't you say? And then um, Tilly says, "Looks like I must pray more." Also, real quick, by the way, thank you, Lloyd. I don't know if we said that yet. Thank you so much for the read over. Uh, we genuinely appreciate you. We've had Lloyd on recently as well. Lloyd is a good uh, Lude Lloyd uh, Lude. Lloyd guy, Lude guy, Lude, Lloyd, Lloyd guy, guy. <laughs> both, both. Just look at his emotes. It speaks for itself. Uh, <laughs> Lude. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm very excited to see more of your videos. Um, but uh, Royer wants to know, cleric, cleric only or cleric and whatever other archetype? That is a great question, Royer. Um, yes, we are cleric primary uh mandatory but uh the members of the iron coin also known as iron coins um they are free to choose whichever prime or a secondary class that they would like so there are eight different types of cleric that iron coins can be um and that is you know the bard version cleric mage tank ranger summoner and rogue um and then of course the cleric so mm -hmm. uh it's 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 gonna be a really interesting time um testing is gonna be very exciting for us uh in a2 um but yeah i would love to get into some of our uh yeah. some of our okay, value but... yeah so uh, there's lots first, of questions sorry <laughs> that's okay i'm happy to answer those as well um but our core values as we have them uh <clears throat> are honor purpose courage and faith and uh, those are represented by the honor of a, uh, we are a Dunes and Kel Dwarven core. Um, but because we are devoted to faith, which is a uh, represented by the patron deity Norlin, and Norlin is a Hyvek orc racial representation. We, uh, our honor of, as Dunes and Kel Dwarves um, is also. Uh, heavily nodded towards um, the the Kaivak orcs, and so there is uh, some future plans involved in which we will be uh, accepting Kaivak orcs as members of the Iron Coin. And so um, this is a really unique opportunity that I am ha very happy to take on, uh, where dwarves and orcs work together. So breaking breaking historical norms and representing and respecting the lore of ashes of creation uh in its own right um and so that's the honor side of things okay um the purpose that we have brought forward is this uh iron coin mechanic and so we are a guild known as iron coin each one of our members are referred to as iron coins and uh what this means is each member will be given a coin and it's not going to be a, an in-game mechanic that we are going to be taking advantage of. This is more of a, a role-play um, introduction, but it has mechanical value to it. Um, and what I mean is each member will be receiving something like a challenge coin, similar to how folks in um, the Armed Forces and or Alcoholics Anonymous or other f versions of communities joining together, they receive coins to uh, represent their membership and something that they can feel uh, appreciative of in their lives. Mm -hmm. And so um, 
The iron coin will represent the member's individual experience as someone choosing to be a cleric with us. Um, and there is a lot that comes with that. It's, it's a great responsibility and it's a great opportunity, I believe, within the Ashes of Creation design. Um, but it also is a representation of our entire guild. And so the, the coin is a representation of us, it is a representation of the entire group, because we will be handing these coins out to members on a very exclusive basis. Mm -hmm. Since each one of the members of the coin receives one coin, they will then be able to provide that coin to another individual within the server and essentially that acts as a promise that they can return said iron coin to the member or to the guild and we will fulfill a request a, a um a deed of sorts That's and okay. um so that a decree is is really what it will be referred to as and the idea is that i wanted to create value for this role play coin in game and so how would how would that work oh right we are all clerics so consider clerics in a siege confrontation consider clerics in a war consider clerics um, guarding caravans and or seeking out um, rare resources and or accomplishing tasks. There is a lot to look forward to, and there is a lot of value that comes from having an iron coin in the server that we will be a part of. And so, yes, there is the purpose of the iron coin. Um, the courage is to be a group of all clerics, the courage to be a cleric with us. And yes, there are RP elements, but we are PVP centric and we love PVP. We are combat clerics. And so a lot of comparisons can be made to the Knights Templar or um, various, uh, various groups out there in the world that are uh, religiously based and prepared for combat and so the idea is that we are <clears throat> yeah just very excited by the the courage that we are bringing and all three of these is sort of alluding to our faith in fate okay and so honor purpose courage and faith is our 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 values and yeah any questions Oops, did you have sorry one? yeah i was muted <laughs> I was typing away at the keyboard for a quick minute there. But uh, yeah, that, that, that's a whole lot of info. And there's probably way too many questions about all of that that people might have just out of curiosity. <laughs> uh, yes. But everybody, definitely uh, feel free to toss questions out. Um, but a couple of questions I have to, to further on into the, the role play lore and like the general feeling of that is, has the guild chosen any specific designs or or desires for specific uh, biome or node type locations on where you're going to try to hunt for a home? That is a great question. So because we are the iron coin and there are RP elements involved with um, the crafting and artisan tree, um, we have incentivized our members to work with us um, to think about mining, to think about weapons, smithing, armor, crafting, um, stone masonry, uh, all the things revolving around metallurgy, even, mm -hmm. even gem cutting. However, we aren't going to be so limiting that we make it mandatory that you have to only do that. I know that within the mechanics of Ashes of Creation, um, players are able to have master crafting profession, uh, two different master crafting professions. And so hmm. um, our design is suggesting and incentivizing our players to work with metallurgy to, so that we can have sort of a uh, divine connection to our artisan profession and hmm. connect ourselves to that experience through role play, but also it brings purpose and meaning to the experience and working with the mechanics of the game. Nice. And so with that all involved, iron is going to be sought after. And um, and so because fate is a orcish uh, faith, um, we are 
actually pretty interested in moving towards the eastern continent. <clears throat> and I believe that is Vandegar, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. okay. So um, um, I could be switching those two around, so apologies if I got that one wrong. But uh, Okay. I would totally um, correct you, but I haven't memorized the map yet myself. So I'm going to yeah, assume that you are 100% correct. Yeah, because you're yeah. our guest and our guests are infallible. So, and to be more specific, we are very interested in uh, the Frost Grave Fells, uh, which is the snowy tundra area on the eastern continent. And uh, I happen to have a huge affinity for polar bears. So, it's all tying together. Yeah. You see, we're getting there, you know? <laughs> yeah, you folks can't see it because I, I did a zoom in on uh, on that lovely dwarven visage. But uh, in, the, in his full image, he is, he is actually riding on a giant polar bear. Actually, pretty nifty. Akeda. And, one uh, year. Happy one year. Cheers, Stick. Stick Sino. Oh, oh man. You. But, uh. Thank you so much, Q. Mm. Yeah. Um, so let's see. There must be some questions. What region of the world would the guild like to be in? Yep, yeah. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, Alluring and uh, who was it there? Uh, Tilly both said that they'd throw a fit if it wasn't in a mountain and a uh, mountainous and snowy region. So you answered both of those in one sentence. Boom. Yeah, going to be out there. Uh, Got to be in a place where you can get the diggy, diggy holes going. Indeed, indeed. Uh, but yeah, we have a lot to get through, and we're all three going to try and share our thoughts within uh, a smaller time frame in general, uh, just because there's so much to talk about. Um, but we'll, we'll try to, um, you know, share... Uh, perspectives as evenly yeah. as possible Better push um, the last thing i would like to mention is that uh based on us being all clerics our future goals are to provide a cleric school for the ashes of creation community at large nice. so seek us out uh we're gonna have a ton of information for everybody um and it is a very exciting time for the iron coin and i welcome all clerics to give us a shot so yeah let's let's get into this so now you all yeah. know where to go to find out how to cleric. Yeah, exactly. Um, so before we get into the node stuff, um, I have a few announcements for community announcements in general. Um, first off, Loreforge HQ has announced that they're going to be announcing their <laughs> uh, guild in June. Uh, June 14th, I think is what they said. Um, and Stikeno, who has been amazing and resubbed for a year now i uh, recently dropped a uh, track that i had the pleasure and honor of being able to narrate and uh, partake in so uh, those are two of the community things um and then right gotta love an announcement about announcement but the reason why that other announcement is important is because we officially have our date for our guild summit and our guild summit is going to be um. June 29th. Um, we currently have uh, some very basic information that you'll see on screen in a moment, um, but more information will be shared on June 15th. We're just working out some finer details. Um, and our Guild Summit, if you guys have not seen our Content Creator Summit yet, um, is basically going to be like a little round table where we're going to discuss uh, different topics that are brought by the guild leaders themselves and Brigand is one of them. Um, and um, we will be having a section. We took your feedback from our last stuff. We reorganized, there's gonna be two sessions. Uh, and during the section sessions, there's gonna be two sections. <laughs> so the morning session will be from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. EST. Um, that will encompass seven guilds, some of which are on the West Coast. Uh, and then the evening section or session is going to be eight other guilds, so a total 15, from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m. EST. And um, everybody has brought their questions. And at the end of each section will be a little bit of a community viewer Q&A um for about 30 minutes each so very excited to do that um 
really excited to be able to showcase uh, guilds and talk about guilds and Ashes of Creation and how they can help each other. <laughs> um, <laughs> the second announcement I have for TGF stuff is that we are hosting an, F, uh, an Alpha 2 commercial contest. And I will go ahead and put the link to the doc um, for more information. But uh, we wanted to try and get the community together. Uh, we've been feeling the hype of Ashes as Alpha 2 gets closer increase. So we're doing a promo video contest where it must be 30, 60, or 90 seconds. There'll be three winners. And the deadline is June 22nd. Um, and that link that I put in chat, or for those of you watching on YouTube later, it is in the description below. Um, that will uh, have a lot more information for you. Um, and then, of course, I will be posting out our June guest list tomorrow on our Discord, YouTube, and X. And and that is our announcement section. <laughs> Quite the burst to push through. Quite the burst. Good job. Good yes. Job. Thank you. I was trying to get through all of that so I can get to the good stuff because we know why we're here. We're here to talk about Node Wars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, first off, I want to ask um, just so that everybody can know, uh, date your character name if you have one separate from your real name otherwise just say your name uh what class you played or tested sorry what class you tested and what type of combat you tested because we can kind of talk about our experience with that now very exciting i'll give you Bring one guess what i played <laughs> <laughs> uh, i'm gonna I guess exclusively... mage exclusively <laughs> mage right <laughs> Um, actually, there was a moment where I did play a mage, but I quickly uh, fixed that issue before things got uh, too out of hand. I'm a devoted cleric, and, you know, I actually played a mixed bag, action and tab targeted as a cleric, and it was enjoyable, to say the least. <laughs> what about you all? Vertec. All right. So me, um, no surprise, my character was Vertec. Um, <laughs> and I played a tank. Also, it should be no surprise to anybody who stopped by here at least three times ever. Um, every <laughs> single time, like always tank, every time. The sub emote. I think it's a sub emote, or, or maybe it's a follow. I don't know. And uh, I'm Chibi Bree, um, both username on Twitch here and in game, and I play cleric as well uh however i stuck with tab <laughs> so oh yeah um, i did hybrid i was pure hybrid i didn't do any tab okay very excited um so my question to you guys because i i know what it feels like playing tab a lot of the people at home can see what it's like to play tab how is it feeling for playing action or hybrid whatever you call it uh well i actually had the opportunity to mess around with a few different kinds of uh, strategies. I, I actually decided to wear plate and a shield and a mace. And I um, found that the shield was best used in action combat mode. And because I really enjoy being a frontline combat cleric, um, I found that it was incredible to be able to uh, use my active blocking while casting abilities based on who I'm uh, supporting at the time. It was uh, it was a great experience to to feel the validity of a of a shield uh, in action combat mode. Um, and the flow of casting abilities was um, I mean, it was smooth. I, I enjoyed it so much. Yeah. Um, and to be able to switch back and forth between that and needing to um, use my mouse a little bit more than uh, just directionally, um, I was able to select my allies in the raid and heal them from afar. And so switching back and forth was crucial as a cleric and to find that middle ground on how and when to use action and when to use tab um, was an incredible experience to me. Awesome. Uh, Vertec, what was your experience with it? Um, I loved it as a tank, um, mainly because also the, uh, the shield interaction, cause you could right click to, you know, do your active blocking, which I did quite often. And then you can hold your left click to do your continuous attacking. 
and then you would stop attacking when you stop left clicking and you know stop your blocking when you stop right clicking it was easy to do like the most common things with just a one two you know <laughs> left click right click and run around um i thought it was yeah, great Lloyd. i had zero reason Thanks. to switch out of uh out of action Lloyd says you lived forever talking to you vertex and i was like that's one thing I, I heard around the community a lot you know it's like vertex like forever alive it felt Although really I good at times because i oh go ahead oh you know go ahead um well as clerics you know we got i, I think you and i, I uh, Ch uh chibi we were focused a lot as and mm -hmm. people knew that we were clerics within uh testing and so um being able to see the effectiveness of a shield and getting the feedback on screen of uh, just an infinite number of blocks because uh, Ranger was doing their Ranger things. Uh, as I was backpedaling, um, you know, pulling back from, from the initial push, uh, it was just, I could uh, see so much potential for strategy and uh, yeah, it was good. Yeah, Felt like I could live forever as well. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that phantom. <laughs> nice. uh, yeah, well, yeah, That's Chibi's uh, Chibi's a boss. It's been proven in in a couple of videos thus far. So you know, gotta if take down the boss true, first, right? If that's true, that's hilarious. Because like I, so for a lot of them, I was able to be on the same team as Vertech, but I think there was like one or two where Vertech was on the opposite team for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there were there were a couple where domestic abuse was a theme for the day. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, uh, Chibi, right. you said you didn't really use the uh, action combat at all? You just went purely with tab? I went purely with tab. Um, I was actually... Uh, on the last one, I was struggling a little bit, but I was actually more focused on, um, you know, understanding where things were. Because for me, lay of the land is more important, and uh, we didn't really have too much time like yeah we spent time testing but we didn't have too much time to like sit there and play around so i have no idea how to use the the like active attacking that you guys are using i just yeah i'm just used to healing and tab <laughs> so just yeah. stick with what i know while i learn the lay of the land and then maybe eventually try something new <laughs> so then real quick then i have a i have a question for you specifically bergen just uh really quick because this is kind of an offshoot um sure did you try to hold your auto attack and actually keep smacking people around while casting your heals out Absolutely. from time to time? Absolutely. Like, did that work well? It was, um, you know, not as effective being a, it was, it was good to chip away at them, but um, it would have to be a scenario where there were others um, supporting that player for uh or i'm sorry supporting me in damaging them the the basic or the you know the the string basic attack was not uh super effective as a cleric swinging his mace um i actually have another question for you brigand yeah so sometimes because of how chaotic it got you can see it on the stream um it was easy to lose people right mm -hmm. um and i believe with hybrid you're healing whoever your icon is on um, However, you're, yeah, your cursor targeting. Uh, so radical. I found it really helpful to kind of reorient myself where people were because of one of the abilities. It does that whole like um, honing in missile of healing, if you will. Mm. And uh, I found that actually really helpful for me because, um, you know, being in tab, I was able to just tab over to whoever was, um, you know, needing heals immediately. And then I could reorient to where maybe some fighting was happening. Um, mm. Whereas I feel like I would have not been able to have that if I was hybrid. How did you feel with that? Like, did you find any issues with that? Or because you were toggling back and forth, you felt like right. it was pretty... It was pretty intuitive once I got the hang of um, switching back and forth. Um, being in action combat, uh, I found it to be a little bit more challenging to um, stay focused on my target for heals. Um, if I was in a group and I was in the back line and I saw this, you know, soup of combat taking place in front of me it's it was really hard to, That's a good way to describe it <laughs> yeah i mean there was there was a lot going on and so <clears throat> uh being able to focus on my primary uh intentional ally to heal them was challenging in action combat but 
when I was being focused and or when I was in more of a combat mode, action combat was great. And I was able to heal myself and I was able to um, back pedal, like I said, towards my other mm -hmm. healers and allies like you and um, a few others. And so my survivability was really incredible. Um, but yeah, it, as far as like healing my allies in the thick of it, it was good for me to switch back to tab and um, be able to use the raid window to uh, pinpoint exactly who I wanted to heal. Mm -hmm. And it was it was a great UI experience and UX experience to uh, uh, be able to see if they were close by, be able to um, find them relatively easily. If I had line of sight on them, their their name would show up af after like running around a, a boulder or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so all of that was really helpful for healing and finding my location, uh, finding the value in my location uh, on the mm -hmm. battlefield. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. okay. Um, so Fubo asked if uh, any of us used the grade, grade, <laughs> group or raid <laughs> setup, uh, hotkey setup in settings. Uh, I found out about it actually during the test that you see on here, and it didn't matter because something happened to our group and Vertec went from the fourth person to the third person. So, and, but what about you guys? And thank you, Hag up, Hag up. Yeah, Hag up, yeah, thank you. Cheers to you. Hey. Cheers, y'all. Huzzah. Mm. Um, I I'm, did not use it, yeah. I'm right there so, with Fupo as a tank. And yeah, I didn't use it at all. There was only one skill that it would have probably been useful for. And it was it wouldn't be that useful. I don't know and exactly what the group raid hotkey so was. There but. was uh, the ability to go into your settings, and oh. you can target. You can make a hotkey for a specific target. So if uh, okay. the way I had it set up initially was, if I hit a button, it would automatically target Vertex, so I could heal him in a flash yes. if I needed. Uh, but unfortunately, because of the way that it would. Uh, it, the situation as you see later in the stream you know um i i'm gonna default to that just because that's what i'm used to ha doing with this stuff but um steven ends up also it's the best visual you can have steven ends up out of a out of the raid with us and he has to get invited back into the raid so clearly you know there's still some bugs with that sure. um but something happened i think somebody left the raid and it made him go from fourth in place to third in place so now when i hit that hot key it would target a different person <laughs> i see i see so yes now that i understand what we're talking about i did actually change my hot key to have um the the tank highlight uh more accessible to me in in my um uh what do you call it the the root the routine that i had um <clears throat> where i made sure that um, when we were focusing targets, I would, you know, I, I think I had it set to F2, and I, instead of targeting the second party member, I changed that to be, I'm targeting the person that we are using to focus our damage and also keep him or her alive at that time. Yeah. Um, so it was really helpful to um, be able to change my hotkeys and consider how to uh, take advantage of that in the in the fight. Yeah, yeah, I um, yeah. The, so from a tank point of view, no, no. Um, there was, and to to answer what somebody somebody was saying, yeah, you could you could select to hotkey things for a tank. There was only one that was going to be useful, and that was a, uh, basically fly to someone and put a shield on them worth uh, a certain amount of your health. Um, mm -hmm. I forget what they were, and they're you know testing and all that. It's not even worth saying percentages or anything at this point. But it was it was a noticeable shield, and it would save somebody's life. But in action combat, it's easier to just see the health bar over them, see how healthy they are, and just immediately dive to that person when you see their health bar low. And who cares what, mm. you know, what player number they are in your group. Yeah. Uh, but, also, to be fair, like I was struggling a little bit. I don't know uh, who else had this issue, um, but it it's something that I was able to put any uh, bug report for, but... Uh, one of the weird issues I had is um, while I was healing on the last uh, on the stream that you're watching now on this test, uh, there was an issue with the um, the cleric resource filling. Um, so I ended up basically a half a cleric because all I had was mana to use. Um, 
and it was a little bit frustrating, but I mean, it's, this is literally why it's called testing, you know? And it's one of those, like, it was frustrating because nobody else really had that. <laughs> and it's like a really rare bug, apparently, <laughs> um, because I was talking to like a couple of the other people and they're like, oh yeah, but then I did this thing and it started filling. I was like, mine's not filling. It hates me. <laughs> I'm not being smiled upon by the, the barren gods, I guess, in that, in that test. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> it's it's interesting that you had such a frustrating experience with that because i i actually found great benefit in that ability um because oh. i i didn't spec into mana regeneration on any of my abilities I, like i didn't okay. uh, spec into holy holy uh, i'm sorry uh bless weapon which would have given me um some mana regen and instead i had to find myself if i didn't have mana and i didn't have the divine power i would have mm -hmm. to go a little bit farther into the back line and take a seat and just wait it out for a minute while everyone else and let folks know I'm out of mana, TB will you step in and vice versa yeah. sort of thing. Well, the other test for that was not, the, it was not the same experience. The thing mm -hmm. I'm talking about is like for that specific test, I was experiencing it where the resource wasn't filling up even mm -hmm. though it was healing people. I see. Yeah. Yeah. That's frustrating. That's, that's what I was calling frustrating. But other than that, yeah. it felt great. Like, uh, I will have to say, um, well, actually, Bertek, I think you had a question. <laughs> we got yeah. way off topic here. <laughs> yeah, to totally went off uh, off base there. But no, that's fine. That's fine. It was it was a question from from chat, so we had to we had to pop that in there first. Yeah. But um, because it was, uh, and actually, you know, it fit right in anyway. Because I was going to ask questions about. How limited did you two feel when it came to skill choices? Because Zero. there was one skill that I wish I could have fit into my build, but I built mm. I built for uh, personal and group defense. Mm. I didn't really go offense. I didn't really go like with you know the the skill everyone talks about, like the whole harpoon get over here thing that the tank can do. <laughs> I really sure. wanted that for here. people like running away and to like single single people out and pull them out of the enemy group and put a wall behind them or something. I felt yeah. that would have been kind of badass, but I it I went was. more for the the defending everybody route instead. Mm. And I I really really wanted that one though. If I had one more the, skill point, if I had one more, the walling people off of the bridge build. Oh, that was uh, I don't care. That was so satisfying. <laughs> Every time a wall like. <laughs> closed off a bottleneck and people could get away that was so satisfying yeah or well, for um, that matter putting it behind people so they couldn't go back to their group oh yeah yeah like a may a may wall yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. for gun yeah i mean i oh. i definitely like i said i i didn't spec into uh mana regen and there was a, a path that i could have taken in the skill tree to do that but that also would have meant that i was more of a dps cleric instead of um instead of the healing cleric that I was focusing on and party party heals and uh, and survivability on myself due to wearing plate and we using a shield and things like that. And so uh, I also heard from others that the tree was a little frustrating because there were some poor choices you had to make to get to the spell that they wanted. And um, mm -hmm. I think that was DA who mentioned that or something. But um, I definitely felt the same way in that, man, I wish I had that ability, but I, I don't want to spend my points in this thing that I don't think is that useful for the build that I was going for. Yeah, yeah, I I can agree with that a little bit. I mean, um, for me, I felt like there was a lot of options. I felt like there was a lot of different like between not just on the skill tree. Are you are you talking about on skill tree specifically in terms of like you're ta talking just about skill choices, not build, like complete build, right? Right. That's what, that's what I. Oh, yeah. Yes, for yeah. Tech, that's what I was really. Talking. Yeah, because you're gonna have a okay. you're gonna have a desired build, and that's gonna take you down certain um, what? portions of the I skill was, tree. But no, I was mainly asking for clarification because that changes what I'm answering exactly. Um, because even though Brigand and I were both clerics, we were built very differently, including mm -hmm. armor. Very differently. Um, yeah. So. Uh, for me, I felt like, yeah, so the choices and stuff, I didn't feel overly limited. I felt like it was a very good uh, thing. And also, by the way, I put in chat that there's a small borky companion in training. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> and then one. Tether says he con confirmed he's swapping to Summoner. Hi, Measle. Um, But <laughs> yeah, no, I felt like there was a lot of I, I kind of like I think you can talk to this more, speak to this more, Vertek, but kind of like you with your shield 
or your wall. Um, there were some ways to augment some of the skills, interestingly, right? So you could go for um, more uh, stacks of being able to heal, like more, um, like if you if you were able to do three of an ability, you were able to do five instead, or if you used it really quickly, it would heal more or using it in quick su succession. And it kind of changed your strategy a little bit. Like, okay, well, which one do I value more? Do I value more having those extra heals or do I value being able to like spam heal real quick and get an extra burst of healing out? And, you know, those were some of the things that I was seeing in terms of like looking through stuff. But also, I thank you, Curry, and we're being raided. Hello, welcome to the Golden Feather. Hello, we're talking about raiders. our experiences. Welcome, everyone. Welcome on in. But, thank you for stopping by. Yee. And uh, we're next. I just dodged it. Oh no, rude. Duck and cover. <laughs> Raiders. Duck and cover. This is supposed to be a friendly raid. <laughs> Leave your weapons at the door. We got food. Weapons at the door. But, the umbrella um, racks right there. Weapon racks on the other side. Yep, yep, yep. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I th I think that there was a, like a good a good amount of options. However, I will say some of the options just felt like, why would you do that? As a cleric, there was the option to use that divine power to, um, instead of mana, so using a bunch of heals and then having that resource when mana was out was great, but there were some abilities that I specced into that were a held ability. In particular, uh, oh, where'd it go? Uh, in particular, the ability called uh, Deliverance was a held ability that I loved and it was great because it would heal extra due to how much health was uh, depleted from the player that I was charging the ability for. And it would have been great to have like an immediate, okay, I'm done charging, let's let's use that ability at its max value. Um, but the choice to use divine power was my option instead. So I had, I had to make a choice between those two uh, to deplete divine power and use this ability that I was charging or use divine power to uh uh in replacement of mana and so i think i made the right choice i think you know the mana replacement was a better move for this test anyway and um but i could see the validity of choosing the other option and so <laughs> i mean i'm i'm really honestly i'm very excited as a as a all guild of clerics and to see the versatility and to see the validity of our two different designs of clerics mm -hmm. you between you and i chibi i think mm -hmm. there's uh, a lot to look forward to as far as uh, class versatility um in the cleric yeah and that's one thing i look forward to when we get into alpha 2 or even um you know potential future testing is playing around with armor sets and everything and seeing what all the options are because to be honest uh my my experience and my plan with going through these testing was to go for as much uh mana regen as possible um just because i had a feeling that i would want to heal a lot and uh i I enjoyed uh, working through the different armor sets, but I, I don't think I've really dialed in quite yet on what build I want to do. I just kind of stuck with a build that I was like, okay, I think this is what I'm going to go with for right now. <laughs> but. Yeah. Um. As for tank, I don't think there were any bad choices. There were choices that wouldn't work well for a uh, node war setup for sure. Mm -hmm. Like they were definitely, they were definitely designed to be, because because there was one that would, uh, it would give you basically a pulse of threat going outbound, plus a little bit of damage, and have a chance to trip people, which could be helpful, mm -hmm. but not nearly as helpful as some of the other, the other skills around it. Um, but there was one specifically that I was looking at, thinking like, okay, so one skill is, it was a tomahawk, you could throw a, throw a tomahawk at somebody. And it did kind mm -hmm. of okay damage. It was just, you know, whatever damage. And I figured that's kind of a silly one to try to pick up as a tank. But then if you spent a second point in there, you could upgrade it to where if you hit somebody in the back, it would slow them down. Interesting. Okay. So if someone, either you're a dive tank trying to jump in there and scatter everybody and just cause disorder, and there's like a healer trying to run away from you, 
you could absolutely try to see if you can take them out while you're there before dipping out and going back to your team. Or if somebody else, like a mage or something, tries to jump in and uh, say, hit you. Yeah, Fupo. Yeah, see, that's what I like to do. Doing, doing some dive stuff. But uh, if there's like a mage trying to jump in like you, um, like they could and, and do like a, an ice storm or something, then, or the blizzard, yeah. I think they called it. Sorry, I'm not a mage. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know mage stuff. Yeah. I don't know mage stuff. But uh, if they tried to jump in a group and do that, and then they tried to blink out and run away, as they're running away, after they've done their blink, you could smack them in the back with that, and then it would be harder for them to actually continue running. And yeah. that's where I would have liked the little yank thing to pull them back to me. Yeah. Feather is asking, can we talk about what kind of stat benefits we got between heavy, medium, and light armors? Like, was light armor tank valid in this test? Uh, Vert like, Vertex, did you test anything besides, you know, the, the typical... I'm a tank, so heavy armor. I went with something that was a balance. And I mean, I had some good healers on me, helping me out to keep me alive. So it's not purely based on my build and my gear, but I will say that it felt like a good balance mm -hmm. because there is, uh, you know, magic coming in, magic damage coming in at me as well as physical on a yeah. constant basis. So going with that, that mix felt really nice to me. Yeah. Um, I liked it better than running with just full, like, heavy armor. I didn't try any light. So. Yeah, that's fair. It's so interesting uh, that this is being asked in Twitch as well. Someone just asked in Discord, uh, <laughs> what what do I was mentioning there were limitations on armor choices. And um, I remember speaking to uh, the devs and to Steven uh, post-test, and I was like, yeah... I felt a little uh, less than effective with my healing abilities because I was wearing a lot of plate. And mm -hmm. at that point, Steven said, well, there are plans for uh, plate to be used. And so this is, you know, I'm excited by that experience. I'm excited by that potential to see what those kind of armor sets will look like and, uh, yeah. and to not feel um, so... Um, limited to choosing cloth but you know this yeah. is alpha 2 or this is pre-alpha 2 this is like there's tons of work to be done and uh to hear that response from them was very very exciting mm. yeah and i know that both you and phantom x also played a different i i don't know uh if he had a different build from you but he was definitely more of a frontliner as well and i feel like when it came down to the different uh, armor types because I I typically stuck with uh, cloth. I did look at heavier armor and I was looking between the two stats on them and I can't speak uh, Korean to Dex specifically. Um, maybe somebody else can, but I did look at how the stats affected me and I went with what I thought would be a good start. Um, but I am looking forward to seeing how other um, you know, because eventually we're going to be able to craft gear and put our own stats into them. And it would it'd be interesting to see the different types of clerics alone. I, I mean, I'm going to call back to Vladis's video about, you know, clerics feeling the same from 1 to 25. I think this note test and the experience that we had with this alone shows that that's not going to be as big of a worry. People are going to build heavier and more frontline-y D&D uh, &D cleric, and people might build lighter and more mana efficient uh world of warcraft holy priest cleric you know and i, th I think it's going to come down to your personal play style and what you want out of healing and what you want out of playing and things like that um because i i mean if nobody else i mean i'm sure vertec and fupo are two examples of two different types of tanks but brigand uh, phantom x and myself are very different types of healing so yeah, and that's that the said, that's the thing because I also like just to add on to what you were saying there. I also heard yeah. somebody um, who was who was uh, giving feedback <laughs> that they experimented a lot with uh, gear on healers, yeah. and they went you know full tilt this way and then full tilt that way and everything in the middle. And they said that uh, you know some of the stats were were definitely boosting their their heals uh, in a big way. So yeah. the, the stats were playing big, but kind of like uh, Fupo was saying, it's it wasn't really a test for armor stats. So I personally no. didn't dig too far into that because 
Yeah. It's not for balance. These these tests right now are not for balance in any way, shape, or form. They're kind yeah. of best guesses and just kind of experimenting and floating things around real quick. So yeah, exactly. I, just, I sorry, yeah, I, I just tried, I just tried heavy saying. and I tried medium and I called it a day. Like that feels good and went with it. So you can go ahead now. I was just gonna say I kind of use it as a which things am I interested in for when Alpha Two is out to like go full tilt into testing. That's kind of what I used, uh, like looking at the different gear for during the yeah. these spot test. And I, uh, I, oh. I, I, I oh. go ahead. Sorry, My well, I, I chose to, uh, <laughs> I chose to wear the same armor throughout the uh, multiple tests that we did mm -hmm. uh, to get to the point of the streams uh, test, and um, and that was mostly plate and a little bit of uh, cloth to um, support my healing abilities. Um, yeah. And I found that to be important as a statistic in a way, because I knew that there were going to be clerics out there that were wearing mostly cloth and were focusing more on the um, the abilities to benefit their 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 class identity. And yeah. so I was really like because of who the iron coin is, I was very interested to see is it what's what's it like to be a cleric that's not full on um magic based and uh and it was cool to see this this uh, sort of uh result over the tests to get to this stream i, th I think there was a, a lot of quality um diversity to <laughs> yeah. to be had yeah and that that's actually where i wanted to take us next is i wanted to know from your perspectives um because i enjoyed from my perspective the difference from uh test one to test six Right? There's a lot that changed um, and there's a lot of different aspects that change. So uh, maybe start off uh, with everybody's favorite changes from one to six. Ooh. Gosh, can I can I be first? Yeah, of course, um, you're the guest. Mm, mm, well, it, mm. it wasn't even it wasn't even about the cleric abilities. I saw a lot of great, uh, you know, potential in the versatility and whatnot, but um, mm -hmm. That red wall with the floating bricks, um, the wall didn't always look like that throughout the tests. There were different versions of this wall that I think um, had a lot of cool potential uh, because it seemed as if they were alluding to the idea that um, you could have a taller wall, you could have a wider wall, you could have a wall that had... Uh, maybe some racial aspects to it. You yeah. Can have a wall that seemed somewhat uh, basic and or was like uh, referencing like this current wall that you see in in the stream was uh, very similar to what folks experienced in uh, APOC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of callbacks to that during the live stream I saw. And so seeing this varied wall um, was so cool. And to see it, it functioning in game and to have like Y'all didn't get to see it out there, but the, there was a wall that had a lion's head on there. <laughs> that oh was my gosh, epic that one. was really cool. It was so good. And I can't wait for folks to be able to uh, create their own wall. <laughs> it's just uh, what, you know what, what what to expect is is really exciting. Just thinking about that diversity. You know, yeah. That wall that you're talking about specifically, you know what I thought of immediately when I saw it, when I first saw that one? <laughs> it looks like a chest piece of uh, Reinhardt armor from Overwatch. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. I it looked like it they just pulled it right off, made it huge, and just stuck it in the ground. Like it was just that big, proud lion. Like you're not getting past me. What are you? What are you trying to do? No. I oh, actually, because I didn't play tank, and I actually don't know the differences between the different walls. There are differences between them, which I would like to mm. protect to kind of elaborate on later. Um, but. Uh, I thought it was it would be cool if that was like a racial augment like if that mm -hmm. lion became a different crest based on your like what if you're a Renkai and it's like a dragon face instead that would be cool I don't know oh cool but uh Bushek, <laughs> what were your favorites from uh one to six in in terms of changes Oof, honestly I I've got to say that my favorite change from between any of them was just how rapidly intrepid just completely catapulted from from one type of experience to another with these tests like improving in an unbelievable pace because it's it's not like we've been we've been doing those tests for like the last 
six months or anything like that. It's really not been that long at all um, mm -hmm. in, in bringing this stuff through. So yeah. between like one test and another, it and I forget exactly when it occurred, but it was like, I think three to four, because I know we weren't we weren't able to take part in in test five. We just we just weren't <laughs> weren't able to bunch of the other ones we could only take part in part of them but i think it was th between three and four there was a massive improvement in performance it was insane um because like some of the Hi. issues were things where we were having like uh memory memory issues where it would just soak up a lot of ram or this or that and then mm -hmm. just the, the next time we popped in there it was just gone yeah just yeah gone. a great point that, yeah, that was something I was going to also mention is like I, I noticed that there was a, a very quick, just like Alpha 1, for those of you that were, were not around for Alpha 1, Alpha 1, they were really good at improving things at a very rapid pace. I feel like that carried over in Alpha 2. Um, we... I felt like if there was any issue, it was it felt like it was fixed the next test almost, if not the test after that, which is still really quick. <laughs> um like, again, uh, I can speak to this because I was the one that kind of raised the complaint a little bit, but I initially felt frustrated. Uh, and I, I haven't said my favorite ones, but I initially felt frustrated by the wall because if uh, Brigand is getting attacked and Vertex puts up his wall and Brigand happens to be on the other side of the wall, I no longer see Brigand. Um, therefore, I cannot heal Brigand. And so the loss of LOS was a little frustrating, especially because Vertec would be on my team. And I feel like to that. I, I used an AOE and I was able to like use my camera to look over the wall and still plant my AOE heal in the area beyond the wall. So yeah, it wasn't beyond like the wall, direct... but not close to the wall. So if you were like right, right close right. to the wall though, that's where I was like getting frustrated. Um but yeah, the thing I was going to continue on with was it feels like not even like a test or two later, they were saying, oh, we've implemented different types of tank uh, walls. Now there's like these options that you can choose from. Um, and that is actually one of my favorites is um, <laughs> is being able to uh, just see something like that. Like I felt like when we gave feedback, it was taken, it was digested and it was returned with something unexpected, like being given more options. Yeah. And tech is quietly, madly typing. <laughs> Quiet, <laughs> quietly, madly typing. <laughs> um, so to give some perspective, I uh, have a 2070 super TI at the moment as a, as a graphics card. And um, in the beginning, the first test, I don't know if that has much to do with it, but there were some choppy bits going on. And by the last test, which we did for the recording, um, mm -hmm. most of those choppy bits were gone. And um, <laughs> and that that's even in the midst of everyone running around yeah. and casting their abilities. It was strange, but also really... Um, potent to have everyone casting their abilities running around and i was able to f run through them with 60 fps and yeah. it, it was it was wild i mean i had the, a very similar experience in a1 but to have the graphic fidelity at this point of what they're hoping for towards a2 it's so good it looks so good y'all oh, yeah yes. the performance difference from test one to test six are, are massive yeah yeah i can i can just not wait until they start actually like focusing full time on optimization. Yeah, yeah, no, I. Because it's going to get even better. I don't feel like during the tests that you're seeing on screen, I don't feel like there was really a time where I felt like throttled or slowed by like too much happening on a server. Really. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> Welcome in, uh, the rotten gamer stream, um, but. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. There was a lot that it iterated really quickly. Um, one of the questions that we had from chat, if you don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. Others asking, are you able to discuss the races in the preview? I only saw Vec and human models. Is there a reason why any of the other races weren't displayed? Um, and 
I'm going to preface this by saying it is my experience. Um, and Maggie has said, you know, they are further along uh, than they show. Um, it is my experience that at the time of testing this, and it was spot testing, I'm going to add this in with it. Uh, it was spot testing in terms of uh, we weren't really given free realm like run of the entire world we were kind of asked to meet up at certain locations and then do the spot testing uh, mm. or the the node wars testing um and the options that we have for that currently were the um kalar and the back right i think uh Fippo puts it well um the it was not a character creator test it was a test for node wars and the finding the fun within that experience and yes. um and to not have a dwarf believe me was very frustrating for me to <laughs> um you know try and make a choice outside of that however my uh i what i decided was okay the silver lining is that uh you know well, you know, we're a, we're a guild about fate, and having a Vec is what something that's huge for the Vec uh, to be about fate. And so I got to play a Vec with the option uh, to kind of just appease that interest uh, for the Iron Coin. But um, yeah, yeah, the uh, the the limited choices, like we weren't able to really. They actually suggested that we not personalize our characters and kind of go for the default and choose your class and get into testing because it, it really wasn't about uh Fupo, creating Fupo's, your character yeah because people adds a great point when you introduce more variables it's harder to find the issues um so mm. when doing this type of testing generally you do not want to have all of the options available especially if you're trying to find like network and general system bugs um and code is really complicated you guys I, I can say that as a web developer. Code is really complicated. Uh, there are times where the craziest thing will mess with something else. And you're like, why is that even messing with that? Uh, and it would not make any sense. So, um, you know, I'm sure they have their reasons that, you know, everything is locked down. Like Bupo said, you know, minimize risk of like adding in just random chaotic components causing an issue and making sure that the node wars itself is working before worrying about adding in different uh elements uh yeah. and fubo also just added it's very standard for alpha testing um it's almost always how uh he's seen it in um all the projects that have helped with uh over the decades so yeah and that's a great perspective to have it's in dark thank you for the stretch yeah it's, it's a limit. long stream, you guys. We actually just conversed yeah. privately, and we are going to go another 30 minutes for you guys. Oh, that's it? Mm -hmm. I, would, I could go two more hours. Let's two go. More two hours. more hours. We stream for oh, two don't hours straight. Don't Three talk hours them with straight. that. They'll want relax, it. Relax, relax. They'll relax. want it. Relax. Just take it easy. I've been a, a coder. I've copied and pasted the same text in a new file. The original failed to compile, but the copy paste uh, compiled and ran perfectly. Exactly. I don't I've had that happen to me too. Mm -hmm. Or like when mm -hmm. you finally go to show your boss that this bug is not working and then it magically runs just because your boss is looking at the code. Runs perfectly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Um, <laughs> but oy, oy. Uh, yeah. I, Vertec, what was your experience with having um, the change in the tank wall over time? Did you like that? Is that something that you wanted to, you want to see more of, or? I would like to see it in general, um, because oh, the okay. the the big change that went with the multiple different kinds of walls that happened during the test that we couldn't make at all, we completely missed. Um, oh, yeah. I sat yeah. in. I, um, I sat in and, and saw a little bit. So did yeah. you get to test that uh, that translucent wall? No, all the, I've seen, and I think Vertec is on the same page. All we've seen, I think, is the lion wall and the red wall that you see on the screen. Okay, yeah, there yeah was, I think I, I missed the one with translucent. Shield, yeah, there were two different wall. two different varieties of the the lion wall that I saw, um, and I don't know if that was them just completely changing things around and trying them with a different test, or if those were two of the three that were included in uh, the test that we missed. But um, I did see one that was longer and it was shorter, and then one that was taller, 
but uh, skinnier. Yeah. And I could see them both being useful, depending on where and you're at and what's going on. When I was listening in um, during that test, uh, people were talking about liking the ability to choose between them and how it kind of changed kind of like with the the healing you know you can have it um burn someone whenever they're attacking somebody or you can have it rejuvenate your mana like the it it, it comes down to situation like what do you want with it and how do mm. other classes you know how do they how are they affected by that wall you know um yeah the, the lower wall Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but someone was asking specifically about that translucent wall. And I don't know if, if Fupo, if you got to test the, the translucent wall, but they were asking, so enemies couldn't shoot through it, but we could as it, mm -hmm. like if our tank was the one that put down the translucent wall, it seemed like we would be able to attack through it, but the enemy would not. Is that is that true if you are still in chat, Fupo? But if not, let's move on. Sorry. Oh, good. Mm, mm, mm. Like a halo drop ball. Yeah, exactly. Well, the way that we, yeah, Fubo says could cast Sweet. through it, yes, enemies could not. And the way that we were trying to talk about it was, if you are familiar with, like, Overwatch, um, the red wall is, like, MA wall. Um, the transparent one is kind of like a Reinhardt wall. Um, and then I think there's, like, a taller wall that's, I guess, kind of like a MA wall, but tall instead of wide. <laughs> yeah yeah it's a it's a um, tall may wall so i wonder if the tall, tall oh right the tall wall was one that we could be lifted up on right like if you cast the the wall and players were on top of the that location they would be lifted up <laughs> to sit on the the whatever one time more it. than lifted up one time i was launched clear i don't know where oh i think it's because one person did it and another person did it right after so like the momentum added up <laughs> and then mm, I found mm, myself mm. standing a short ways away from where I started. <laughs> yeah, and Fupo, I'm um, kind of hoping it wasn't a bug. I really hope that that's a feature of that wall in particular, because that meant that we could climb onto certain <laughs> areas and it made a climbing puzzle. It I'm, seemed like it could be helpful for a climbing puzzle. I'm just saying it's great to use as a makeshift catapult, a.k.a. dwarf tossing. Yes, <laughs> catapult me with that wall. Oh my gosh, nice. that would be I would die a happy dwarf. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, the other wants to know: Could you clip the walls within each other from two tanks, or the their placement issues you had to fight with uh, based off of design? Yeah, that was a good slash bad thing. That I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's probably better that they could clip together, but uh, people would end up accidentally like stacking their walls almost exactly in the same spot, but just a little bit different because there wasn't communication on, hey, I'm going to drop it now and then somebody else drops it after me or anything. So someone would call mm -hmm. whoever's a shot caller would say, we need a wall here and two people would cast it and it'd be like crisscrossed in like a little X. Um, That's hilarious. But, but yeah, with that, you could take, if you wanted to be really mean to somebody, especially with the translucent walls, I think it'd be hilarious if nothing else, take three walls and just triangulate them in a little tiny box with three different so, tanks and just that's nuke actually, one person who can't do anything. Yes, that was actually was um, really annoying as the cleric. Uh, I needed to get into certain positions to heal our allies. And yeah. I think the team was prepped for that. It almost felt like they were waiting for me to get into the front line a little bit. And then they segmented my entire raid away from me. Like I was singled out and that meant that rangers and mages had a field day with me for a little bit. Thankfully, the the active shield blocking was working and I could, you know, survive for a bit while that wall was taking its time. And by the time it disappeared, I was able to get back. But there were opportunities for some great strategy where you could single someone out and they'd mm -hmm. be stuck. Now, on that note, at the beginning of the testing phases, I did notice that there the CC was intense with the wall. Like true, uber intense. I felt like I couldn't do anything. If the other team had a bunch of tanks, that's basically it, how it felt like they would win the war. It's just uh, because for those that don't know, like when you put up at least uh, maybe a certain wall, it would also stun those that were like uh, that touched the wall. And that included 
running up to the wall afterwards, which I did not know until I learned the hard way. <laughs> you bump into but, the wall and you're stunned. It was it was like a it was like it was, an AOE stun kind of thing. Is how it was used for a minute there during one of the tests. Is it was just. The wall would constantly be brought up in the middle of the group just to just to yeah. stun everybody. True. Um, Feather wants to know: Should walls have HP and be destructible? And John Prescott wants to know: How much different is the gameplay compared to Alpha One? Is it smoother? That's Ooh. a good question. Can so, you, should the wall have HP? Oh, hmm. I don't think so. I think it should be able to stay up for its entire cast ability um that that is part of the tanks thing but you know maybe there's something about summoners and or bards that are like no 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 i don't think your ability is going to work this time or for as long yeah. or something to that effect like i think yeah. that would be neat to have the option to choose if you wanted like the the wall instead of lasting like uh six seconds it would last 10 but it would also be hit point bound yeah. So, I mean, that could be a neat trade-off someone could choose to do. But in general, if there had to be one, then yeah, I would stay. I would say, you know, no hit point, but you know, just a shorter casting time than what I would want for something that had hit points Ooh. or not casting time but so, uptime. Some of the um, things that Chad is saying are um, that. Uh, maybe have the one type of the wall where it has HP, but does not disappear unless you break it. Uh, that one's from Fupo. Lloyd was saying if the wall could stay up longer and had some HP, then yeah. Um, and then Bendar was saying something like a uh, dispel. Um, uh, and... Oops, sorry. Well, I, I kind of want to touch on Ashes of Nerror's question. How many players were in the largest battle that we experienced? And I think it was something like 50 players, 60 players. That sounds about Somewhere right. in there. I yeah. honestly didn't count. I, I was just focused either. on what I was doing. Yeah, I just, I know, I know that um, the number of groups and the number of people in them that, that you saw on um, Steven's stream where there was about five groups four or five groups and there were like seven or eight in every single group was I mean that was from what I recall there were like four or five groups almost mm. every time so Fupo I guess eight. 83 83 yeah we're on the server for the top number mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. Nerer, okay. is 250 versus 250 doable in its current state I think it still needs some polish um, that being said as I mentioned, in the six tests that we did together, there was choppiness galore in the first test. By yeah. the end, it was buttery Barely smooth, there at all. close by, um, yeah. but 10 to 15 feet away, it was choppy still. Yeah. That shows me that they are working very closely with this concept of 250 versus 250. They are intending for that to be very doable, and I have faith. I thought 250 versus 250 was the sieges, not the war. Yeah, yeah, sieges. But what he's asking is that possible. Are those numbers yeah, possible? Yeah. Okay. I, th and I think so. I, w I would agree. I think that by the time they get done doing all their optimizations, it, it will be. Um, I would like to say there was a, there was an earlier question that kind of ties into this. And that was the, the one that was read but not really addressed. The, uh, from John A. Prescott, how much different <laughs> is the gameplay compared to Alpha 1 smoother? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's I from what I recall of Alpha One, because we were moving during Alpha One, so we didn't get to to play with it as mm -hmm. long. But from what I recall of it, um the the graphics and everything have gotten a little bit of an increase up till now. Uh, it just looks better to me, but I've also gotten a better computer, so that might be it. I, I don't know. But at the same time, it seemed like the performance dipped down with the first of this series of tests for this uh, node war, but then it popped right back up. And now I think it's it's better. Yeah. Um, and for me to be able to answer the question, um, I was going to essentially say, yeah, I, I feel like that as well um, for the Alpha 1 comparison. But um, for, I forgot what the first question even was, so I'm trying to find it now. Um, oh, the 250, but... 250, if you think it would be, it would be able to happen. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I feel like that's a newer question. I was asking two other questions. Pre- like, so there's the smoother, and then there was another question I asked. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it was smoother. I'll just miss out on answering whatever the other question was. Um, but yeah, no, I, I do feel like it it's at a really good spot, especially as people in chat are, you know, um, pointing out. Um, it's all it's UE5 that they've just recently moved over to in terms of development time recently. So um, I think I think that's good. But I think uh, we are getting towards the end. So I wanted to ask a fun question. Basil was wondering. Uh, at the end of the Node Wars stream, they talked about uh, voice over IP and uh, being able to have open chat in game. Um, but what are your feelings on open chat in taverns? Is what Basil wants to know. Ooh. Ooh. Brilliant. Hell yes. Hell yes. Like banana bread at work. I can't wait for VoIP and taverns. I can't wait for that sort of experience. Um, it is something that I'm really looking forward to. I kind of wish it were... I, mean, I know there are a bunch of ways that this could be abused, but I kind of wish VoIP was happening all the time. Um, <laughs> but I'm coming from a roleplay experience where, uh, you know, roleplay was happening all the time, and I would love to see that kind of experience take place in Ashes. But knowing that it's an MMO and that there's lots of things to consider, um, taverns are going to be a really good time. And yeah. uh, and to hear Steven talk about how there will be VoIP in taverns, that's the intention anyway. Um, so be it. I'm here for it. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, no, no, Lou, Lou Lloyd, pe- tavern owners can't kick people out at all. That's, that's something that we've raised a concern about and issues with before. And that's like where... I Derek suggest. Right about uh, that. Oh, should have the ability to, yeah. Um, cause that's what we've, that's what we've asked for before and, uh, even raised it as a question um, a couple times and like the answer Thank you, um, Cheers. from Steven has always been like, no, there's not going to be any additional control and dampening of what people are allowed to do beyond what's already there. Um, mm-hmm. It's uh, it's apparently supposed to be there because it can cause friction or something similar to that. Uh, I I mean, apparently, I or as you can see, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that if you if you have a business going, you should be able to tell someone, no, just no, you're not allowed to talk here. You're not allowed to be here. Get out of my business. Um, I think you probably can a typical freehold building, Lloyd, but I, I think Tavern specifically, he was mentioning could not. Um, or out maybe of your it, house it's just, specifically. It's yeah. like you're a, you're a house. You can you can kick people out of, you can lock your doors and all that, but you're anything else on the freehold no it's free game it's open game like anybody can go wherever they want and it's up to individuals to mute someone if they want to mute somebody yeah but for me yeah as long as i have the ability to mute somebody who's being a a problem for me uh i would be fine with the voiceover um because then maybe like if we ever want to do a tavern talk literally in the tavern <laughs> you know yeah like that's that's that be, no that i don't know that that sounds like a good time just for like a live stream not not a run of show sort of experience but, yeah but yeah, with but that's, twitch and everything there's a lot on the line there sure sure the control there is there is there's a lot and that's that's the big thing is like as streamers and podcasters like we want to be able to say like hey it's night for like mead quest uh, mead quest monday I'm going to hang out at the tavern and literally just make make drinks and stuff and play some tavern games and, and yada yada. And then out of nowhere comes in somebody just blasting the most terrible uh, uh, yeah, audio right. <laughs> of both quality and um, upstanding. Or just upstanding, you know, saying uh, the most ridiculous quality. things. <laughs> yeah, and it's going to absolutely like destroy a stream. It's going to blast people's ears out. It's going to sound like crap and potentially be a violation of terms of service, depending on what it is. It gets yeah. played. Yep. So yeah, there's that. Um, so I mean, it absolutely in an kinda, ideal situation, why not? But I, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, like I'm going to have to turn off like me hearing any kind of uh, 
uh, voice over IP, like just completely mute everything for hammers. myself if I'm going to stream anything in the tavern. Yeah, saying the naughty is absolutely, that's more what I'm worried about is people just being, saying stuff that we don't want heard yeah. on our and stream. And that's what I was trying to come up with a nice way of phrasing it, like absolutely bringing out things that would, you know, break terms of service just because of what what the, the content Maybe is. There you go. Sorry. So that's I'm, that's my big I, worries. But yeah, and streaming on delay does suck. Um, but you know, I th I feel like with Ashes it's gonna be kind of required. There's gonna be a lot of content where people can stream snipe you and you know stuff if they're on the same server on you, as you at least. But I mean the benefit is it's not World of Warcraft where you can just port over to a different part of the map be there in like a second with all of your friends you have to like actually slowly get over there <laughs> so there's there's that and we have a whole conversation on our youtube about slow travel and things like that but um all in all I, how about uh final thoughts on testing in the node wars as our as our final like wrap-up topic great um so yeah i think from my perspective, being uh, a representative and leader and member of an all cleric guild and to have this discussion and hear your perspective on being a cleric and how varied you were compared to my own build and mm -hmm. to see the progress that took place throughout the one through six tests and to um, have such great questions come up and um, and see the potential that is out there for a lot of class diversity. Uh, I think the the stress of choosing skills through the tree is really exciting and valuable as far as like, who are you going to be as a cleric or as a ranger or as a tank? You know, there's lots of options out there that I think we're just now getting uh, our toes wet with. And I can't wait to go swimming with all of you, uh, so to speak. Um, if you are a cleric out there, I think there's a lot to look forward to. And if you're looking for info, please come check out the Iron Coin as far as that's concerned. Um, looking forward to those opportunities. Yeah. And you you as well, Fupo. Uh, Vertex, um, what were your thoughts and overall feelings of testing? The yeah. Overall thoughts and feelings on testing. Um, I like how the tank feels. I did not play any other class, so I can't speak towards any of that, but I can say Same. that, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I like how it's feeling. They have a nice kit. There's a good variety to it. The, the skills feel like I am either definitely keeping myself alive or definitely keeping some like someone else alive, or I'm doing something that feels like this is what a tank should be doing. I am yeah. traversing over here and protecting somebody or I am pulling someone who's who's trying to get away back into us or like yeah and, and narrow yes you you can I definitely I I slayed a good number of people in in my days I did plenty of slaying um yeah we yeah we were we were able to it's just not as fast as say a warrior or something or fighter rather um so yeah it's yeah. it's good um Intrepid, as always, progresses really fast with their fixes. Yep. When they had something they wanted to address, they addressed it really quick. And it just overall feels great. And I'm super excited to, to see it move on to Alpha 2. Yeah. Um, I also had a very similar feeling. I mean, uh, it feels like I'm testing an MMORPG. Um, I did not have any of the hybrid uh, combat that you both tested but uh, it does sound like it could be a viable option for cleric obviously brigand you um you were uh, a testament to that and um mr bach to answer your question and also encompass it into my answer as we wrap up um i feel like after a while i just kind of saw through it it, it kind of was really bright to me i would have liked to have been able to turn it down a little bit but all in all i still was able to kind of follow for the most part what was happening in battle um and it, it didn't really bother me too much and that was actually one thing that the community was worried about and i, I wanted to speak to that as well um just as we watched through the different um live streams we're looking at how bright the spells are how busy they can get um 
And this is the first time we're seeing all of those spells used together in a very natural PvP point. And uh, it was very fun because uh, it was scripted lightly, but a lot of the fights were very organic fights. They they weren't, hey, let's group up over here and go zerg them um, while everybody knows like exactly who they're zerging <laughs> kind of thing. Um, Dark, okay. thank you. Thank you, Sindarix. Much appreciated. Cheers, Cheers to you. That... Cheers. And Nera, we Huzzah. actually, yeah, I was I was talking to somebody during during the live stream, uh, in uh, Ashes General. But yeah, it's the the spell animations to me, and this is me as a tank that was in the middle of a lot of stuff happening, not as one person who was casting it right on my character or anything. But I was in the middle of a lot of the effects, and it it looked a lot more pronounced on the video recording than it did to my own personal experience. I don't recall them standing out that much when I was running through and, and tackling everything. But the yeah. video on live stream, that when when uh, they were playing that on Twitch, yeah, it, it definitely felt like it was much more pronounced. Yeah. Um, and just as an FYI, Kurian earlier uh, redeemed Guide to the Raid. And would like us to raid over to the Hidden Dagger Inn, who is not usually live when we're ending. So I feel like that is an appropriate <laughs> person to go raid over to. Uh, he needs he needs some love. Um, but uh, yeah, for tech, I'll go ahead and let you do our usual. And I'm going to get this raid started. Alrighty, alrighty. Well, thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out with us this whole time. Thank you so much for... Uh, just giving us your fee your feedback, your questions, your everything. Um, did my brain just uh, faded? Did you end up putting out the feedback thread already? Yep, I did that. I can do it again. Okay. But while, yeah, while don't you do forget. Your spiel. Yeah, because that's what I wanted to remind everybody is definitely go mm -hmm. in and leave your feedback for Intrepid so they know what you feel about how it looks. Because that's that's the ultimate uh, goal of testing is to find issues, fix issues, and make sure that they're on track with what they're saying and if you see any issues or any problems definitely bring them up if you see something that looks great and seems like it's going to feel great mention that to them as well <laughs> it's always good to get a nice little motivation boost yes but and a quick thank you again to all the followers the subscribers and the bit givers we appreciate you huzzah yes 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 thank you all thank you all but most importantly thank you for spending your time here as always I need to remind you that you do not get refunds for your time. Therefore, it nope. is your most valuable commodity, and we really appreciate Including you spending it at the tavern. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Make sure to toss a coin to your mayor for this. Hey. Yeah. Thank you all for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Uh, cheers, everyone. And be sure to stay tuned, because a lot more is coming. Mm -hmm. See ya. All right. Catch you folks later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.